Okay. Uh, let me begin. But uh, I have a small quiz to begin. Have you seen this painting? Yes. Yes. Do you recognize these buildings? Have you come across them in uh, in the town? Yes. Yes. So which one is this? This is a church. That's a church. And what is this? Temple. Which one? Uh, you can very randomly say a temple in India. Come on. <laughs> huh? This is a Bulakkal temple. In, right? It's very nearby. And this is actually the entire set. They are a, a replication of somebody's paintings or uh, sketches. Can you guess who? Sorry. Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, now that you are... I am hoping that you like LP and you have seen things around. Uh, let me tell you what we are doing as part of uh, improvement, uh, improving fecal sludge management or wastewater management in LP. Uh, what I will be discussing is uh, why do we need FSM in uh, the town, uh, what is the methodology we adopted and why we adopted that met methodology in to understand the current status. Uh, then I will discuss the outcome of our strategy, what what are our findings regarding current status, what are we recommending to the local government or municipality and conclude, essentially talk about everything that I have talked about, uh, I mean summarize in the conclusions. So this is the chain Sharda showed, right? Okay. Keep this in mind always, okay? Uh, and I will, all, I, in my talk I will be following the sequence of user interface, collection or containment, emptying or conveyance, uh, treatment and disposal or reuse. Okay. Uh, why do we need FSM in Alapura? Uh, the point, the simple reason is that most of the toilets in Alapura, according to census, are connected to some kind of on-site system. Whether they are pit or septic tank, doesn't matter, but the point is all these systems fill up and when they fill up, they need to be emptied. Okay, that is one. Uh, second, and uh, Alapura is also uh, declared open defecation free under the Swachh Bharat mission. Alapura has been declared open defecation free, but you continue to see pollution in canals and visually uh, ex my colleagues who are experts in understanding pollution, they tell me that it is uh, dissolved or uh, suspended solids or dissolved solids. Essentially meaning that it is coming from grey water or black water from the uh, domestic, domestic wastewater. So, and then we thought why do we need FSM? We should compare what are the other alternatives that we have. So, first option obviously is sewerage. Uh, as Sharda explained, it's very capital intensive, it's very uh, water intensive. You need water to transport waste. And in a water scarce future that we are looking at because of climate change, uh, water is going to become probably gold. Uh, second, it's a, so laying sewerage system needs a topography which is conducive to it, right? You need to the water need or the sewers need what is called as self cleansing velocity right and in the flat terrain of uh, alapura it's not possible so it's like almost maybe a kilometer down the line you'll need a pumping station and plus there are canals in town so you can't take line or sewage lines under the canal so there is complexity involved and then Sewerage also needs that you bypass the existing on-site systems because sewerage systems need a minimum load of microbes and pathogens and nutrients to be treated. If you don't get that, then you are underutilizing your treatment capacity and that is why you will have to dismantle the existing systems and as Sharada explained, it, it involves money spent by households which they may not be really willing to do. Uh, there are examples I have come across in Gujarat when I was working where uh, cities have laid sewerage systems but uh, households have not accepted it because uh, once they connect to sewerage systems, uh, their taxation increases. Okay. 
so that is one then there are decentralized systems I'm sure you've heard of them but in india except for bangalore no city has taken it up at city scale okay so they exist at institutional levels some school may have it some industry some it company will have it uh, in other parts in bangalore they have it for all the areas where there is no sewage but uh, decentralized system so we don't really have an experience for decentralized systems but fsm uh, two advantages one it builds on the existing on site systems so whatever is there you can actually use them as it is and second it, there are some successful examples in, Indo, in out of the country and now very recently in india also uh, methodology used we had to now census gives us i mean most planning in india depends on information from census related to uh, data related to demography comes from census but when it comes to sanitation we realize that we can't rely on it totally and part of the reason you already know we are asking questions about the type of on site system in the town right in your questionnaire you have those questions right yes that is because we want to know or decipher what is the type of on site system they have and because and we want to do that because that has an implication on the quality of fs that will be generated which will in turn influence what is the treatment technology or treatment levels needed okay so what type of on site system you have makes a big difference for managing the remaining part of the chain uh so os so on site system related data from the census we can't till, uh, totally rely on so we used two types of two methods to collect data one was household survey and a lot of interviews which preceded the household surveys for two reasons one we wanted to uh, check what questions we should be asking also you have a lot of questions where alternatives are already provided material of the wall of the bottom etc right so th they all come from those qualitative interviews and uh, uh, we did the household so this study relies on two studies that we did as part of a summer school one was a socio economic survey and one which i think most of the questions you are also using and second was a willingness to pay survey for fsm and uh these i mean the both the studies have common questions that the analysis relies on uh you already seen the questionnaire right so i am not going to dwell much on this uh so these are the questions related to uh, on site systems what is the shape material of the wall of the bottom uh whether it is with, our, with it has an opening or no at the top availability of vent pipe this is uh just to assert a certain whether the oss is a septic tank or no not uh, emptying frequency mode of emptying whether they are doing it manually or uh, they use mechanized systems or and the charges paid for emptying and uh, qualitative interviews we used to confirm the questions and we also pilot tested the questionnaire so the questionnaire that you are using this was pilot tested by a group of students from uh, who were pursuing masters in uh, social work they pilot tested it they uh, they gave us their responses in terms of what is the is the sequencing right is the options that we are providing in answers are they right and this all plays a very important role when you are doing research because anything that goes wrong here makes an impact on the analysis and uh, we used odk collect and we also used maps and all on while using it we also learned on the way so to begin with we were providing this kind of map to the enumerators that is participants where we said that this red line a team will go on this side and cover two houses and this side and cover two houses but we soon realized that in areas which uh, there were dense lines it would be difficult for participants to manage so then we started using uh, polygons so that every team knows which area they are exactly focusing on uh the strategy we chose for sampling was random sampling uh, it's benchmark for uh selecting or sampling and uh, the way we or the way we described it to participants was you choose so every time you are dropped at a location you choose the first house randomly and then each study had their own criteria so willingness to pay needed a wider uh coverage of sample so we said that you can choose every sixth house 
and socio-economic survey because they were concentrating on a smaller patch of area, just two rows besides the canals. We said they could take every alternate or third household. And if in case that household is locked or not ready to participate, then they can go to either the earlier, I mean the neighbor, either of the neighbors. Okay. And, and I don't know whether you've come along, uh, in the area that you are going, if all along the canal there are no houses. In parts of Alapi, uh, the density varies and some places it's very less. So, in such places, uh, we ask the enumerators to uh, survey all the houses. Uh, so, this is how we and then we can carried out training of participants in for ethics of research, ethics of doing household surveys, uh, like all the practice that uh, including uh, how do you approach household, how do you ask questions and I hope our teams, our team leaders did that for you. Uh, we had volunteers who had done those surveys earlier and they actually carried out mock surveys for them so that they understand. So, all our questionnaires were in English, but the conversation was to be in Malayalam. So, what exactly are the words to be used, what words are not to be used was very crucial. We trained them for ODK Collect, Maps, we explained each question in detail, significance of the question and uh, instructions for sampling as I said earlier. Uh, data was collected by two, so as you have known we have had in the summer school we had two batches. So, for willingness to pay we had uh, 40 participants who uh, from the first batch who collected data and uh, in uh, for socio-economic survey we had uh, from both the batches we had about 300 students who collected data and uh, they were as, as you are going there were always teams of two. Uh, one of them had to be Malayalam speaker. Uh, every five every five teams had a captain and this captain came from one of the volunteers who did pilot testing of the survey. Uh, there was parallel data collection between multi, so two types of teams, right? Willingness to pay and uh, socio-economic survey and both of them going to the same area. So, how do you know whether a household is surveyed or already surveyed or not? So, we gave them stickers that they could uh, stick on uh, gate of the household and uh, so we uh, surveyed about uh, 2100 more than 2100 households in the process and this is the outcome of that. So, this is census which says that 14 percent has 16 uh, percent has a pipe sewer network which is not true, uh, 61 percent have septic tank and our questions we ask respondents to tell us what kind of on-site systems they have. And then we also analyzed based on the detailed questions we had, we had asked what is the on-site on on system. And we realized that only half the systems that reported that they said that they had septic tank, only half of them was actually septic tanks. So, remaining half were not septic tank, they were pits. Uh, then uh, we also uh, questioned about emptying practices. So, we realized that 43 percent of on-site systems have never been emptied and that could be from anywhere from one year, I mean the age of the septic tank could be anywhere from one year to 50 years and more. So, that was one. Uh, second, there is no formal emptying service by the municipality and this came from interviews not only from the <coughs> household survey that the municipality does not provide any service nor has it licensed uh, service providers. As Sharda was telling, right, you have to, so in Devanali, they, they are planning or they plan, they license service providers so that you can keep a, you can keep an eye on them, you can check them as municipality, you do not want them to dump it everywhere or anywhere. So, you need to uh, bring in some mechanisms of accountability, but that is not the case. And there is absolutely no use of protective equipment, whether it is done manually or uh, it is done. Uh, by mechanized MTS. Uh, also, now uh, recognizing that manual emptying increase in exists is a little tricky because uh, no government would want to acknowledge that the practice or in their city open uh, manual emptying exists because there is a ban by law. Okay, uh, and then uh, there is mechanized emptying is provided by an organization or an association of uh, 
septic tank MPS. They have about 25 members, uh, total 50 trucks. Uh, each truck is uh, capacity is about 5,000 liters, and uh, they and they operate only at night. And Sharda has written a paper in EPW where he describes their operations uh, of MTRs at night in Bangalore. And it is very similar here. And we got our so the venue you are here. Uh, we got our septic tank emptied before the summer school the winter school started. And they came at 4 a.m. in the morning. They got it emptied. The second load they emptied. They went for 20 minutes and came back. So, any guesses where they dumped? Okay, I'm not. I don't know. We we don't know. So that's a good guess. And uh, we also try to find out uh, with the households how much do they pay. Now, if you see uh, here, this is. So some households pay up to 500, a lot of households, between 500 and 1000. And these are all because they get it emptied manually. Getting emptied manually is much cheaper, is much cost effective for households. And uh, this is, uh, most of it is for uh, mechanized empty. And some of them also pay more than 7 to 10k and more than 10k, 10,000. Okay. So this is where we are trying to figure out if we regulate them, can we uh, ensure that they charge a fixed amount for households, etc. Uh, there is also an alternative practice which we have not come across in literature. And But this has come up in two places, one Alapi, one Nedumangad, a small town near Trivandrum where we also did a small case study, uh, where we found that uh, these manual, uh, so households call these emptiers, they come with some chemical and they spread that chemical or mix that chemical in the tank and over a period of few days or couple of days the sludge volume reduces by to less than half and then it need not be i mean then it need not be emptied okay so we are still figure trying to figure out what is that practice or what is that chemical whether it is safe or whether it is environmental friendly etc but that is also the case okay uh, Currently, there is no treatment system in the town. Uh, the septic tank association coordinator, he claims that the trucks take them to a treatment plant to a town which is 24 km, 25 kilometers away, Cherthala. But uh, uh, as our own experience shows, it's, that may not really be the case. Also, uh, it's, I mean, as Sharda explained, right, you, you have to spend money to uh, take your vehicle from here to Cherthala or 25 kilometers away and plus the plant at Cherthala charges some money about 1000 rupees to deposit their load. So any sound, any good businessman would not want to do that, right? So our guess is that it is not taken there. Uh, there is, uh, so manual MTS, they would generally either spread that uh, fecal sludge either on the plot, on the same plot or in <coughs> adjoining plot and uh, or they would dig another pit and empty it there. Okay. And uh, there are proposals under consideration in the municipality where they are having a 24 KLD plant in General Hospital, 10 KLD plant in Watson Park and they are also planning to have 4 mobile FSTPs. So this is a mobile FSTP, it is it's mounted on truck and uh, it uses electropyrolysis uh, technology. and the owner claims that uh, it can treat about 50,000 litres of fecal sludge in 20 hours. So every 24 hours it can treat about 10 truckloads of uh, fecal sludge. But uh, yes, again this is this uh, photo sir has clicked only yesterday and we, we will want to see more of it before we get here. Uh, this is a shift flow diagram based on uh, the analysis that we that I presented earlier. So yes, uh, so uh, this shift flow diagram is a methodology developed by researchers all from all over the world, uh, especially funded by the world by the World Bank and the Gates Foundation. So it on this side it shows what is the type of uh, containment system. So this is uh, on-site system. 
there is no off site sanitation and there is no open defecation in the town ok. So, all of it is uh, contained on site, uh, part of it is emptied, but whatever is emptied is going to the environment without any treatment and whatever is not emptied is also not considered safe in the pit and why, why do you think it is not considered safe in the pit? Exactly, ground water level. The ground water level, so literature says that if you want a pit to be considered safe, there has to be a distance of about minimum 2 meters depending on soil type between the bottom of the pit and top of the water table. And here, especially in the monsoons, and you realize that this area flooded, the water and the our waste water all mixed together, <coughs> including flood water, etc. Uh, so, what are our recommendations based on what we have studied here? So, one, we recommend that for collection system, all the unscientific septic uh, or, or non-septic tank OSS should be should be replaced by septic tanks and this can be done gradually because it is households who will have to spend money. But we also carried out a willingness to pay survey in the summer school and we realized and our I mean our finding is that households are willing to pay to, to get their on site system replaced. And if it is managed, so if the entire chain is managed, more people are willing to pay. <coughs> So, all the more reason for the municipality to ensure that the remaining part of the chain is managed, right. Uh, it also, I mean we would also want to suggest that you standardize sizes because if you do not standardize sizes then you cannot, uh, I mean there will be situation where a household will empty it every 3 years and a household will not be required to empty it for 10 years. So, if you can standardize sizes you can more or less standardize empty. Uh, and this can be done in two ways. One, you must have seen some prefabricated plastic ones, the orange colored ones if you moved around in town, you must have seen them on the shops. Second, uh, you can do, so that they, so they are prefabricated in uh, fiber reinforced plastic. The other way of uh, other prefabricated material which they are available in is concrete. And uh, second, you can do training of masons, contractors who construct on-site systems so that they do not exceed the size of on-site systems. Uh, because And because our uh, on-site or willingness to pay survey found that people are willing to pay, then we advise the municipality that instead of funding it yourself, why not you ask or you promote households to get them replaced. And, it, and you can promote it in several ways. Like uh, for example, in Nashik, uh, my hometown, uh, people who install solar uh, water heater, heating systems, they get a 5% rebate in property tax, which is a good enough incentive for households to go for solar it. So similarly, you can try and incentivize that. Similarly, uh, many places in Maharashtra, they get, uh, if you want to install a <coughs> solar uh, water heat is, heating system, you get uh, loans for that at 2% interest rates and market rates are about 12 percent. So, all these incentivizes people to get their uh, or these are the mechanisms you can use to incentivize people. Then finally, if some, some households are likely that they will not be able to afford it. So, then they can be incentivized by giving a partial subsidy right? like 50 percent or 60 percent of the or I mean the trend is to go for 100 percent, but if you give 100 percent the other side of the story is that there is no ownership. So, if you let them spend part of the money, then there is some kind of ownership. And finally, uh, the local government or the municipality should develop an, a database where each septic tank is geotagged, where location is geotagged, so that, so and then they have a data of size, of when was it last emptied, so that say three years down the line you want to check which households emptied in 3 years earlier and then you want to prepare a schedule that these are the households you want to get them emptied. So, you know exactly when which households are to be emptied. Uh, you can, so we are, so 
Emptying, there are two aspects to it. One, who will empty it? So, because the number of trucks involved are, there is quite a number involved. Uh, what do you think determines uh, how many trucks will be required for empty? Yes, sorry. Time. But how would that for yes, you were on to something and I am guessing that's... It's both connected I guess. Like if there is a four member family, obviously this is the number of... Uh, the 80% percent of it definitely goes to the wastewater. And then with due course of time, if it has been like a year long, probably that uh, safety time would take. No, no. What I am saying is, my question is, uh, how many... So how a city has say 1000 safety tanks? What will or septic tanks or on-site systems? What will determine how many trucks it will require to empty? Capacity. Capacity of septic tanks. Yes. Time to empty it. Right. Distance to the emptying location. Right. Population density. I'm a little low. Scaling what? For each 5 or 10 houses there should be one tank. No. That is a lot of... Uh, so, uh, essentially there are 3 or 4 carats. Uh, I mean, uh, the number of trucks that are required depend on one, number of septic tanks in the city of course. Second, how many... How many of the OSS can be emptied in a day by one truck? And that will depend on, in turn, depend on location of the treatment plant. Okay, how much time does it take to empty the on-site system? And how much time does it take to transport that fecal sludge to the emptying location? Third is number of working days in the town. Can you guess how much should be the standard number of working days? Year, year, one year. Two eighty, about right. So for this kind of service, because it is emergency service, also uh, is generally three hundred. But it can be substantially reduced in a place like Kerala. Why? Strikes. Wow, interesting answer. But not substantially reduced. They are like if you count once a month, it will be twelve less. Floods, rains, exactly. So if you have, if you select treatment systems that will not be operational during monsoons, you can't empty the tanks during monsoons, right? And in Kerala, you have six months of rain, rains, and at least the four monsoon months, it rains almost every day. That's what Sridhar tells me. Okay, so that will, so your treatment technology in turn will de decide your emptying or number of trucks that you need. Okay. Uh, again, as I discussed earlier, the database should reflect when the OSS is emptied. Uh, alternatively, you can go for such a plan where you know you decide you divide the city. If you decide that you will have you will empty the on-site system every three years, you di you divide the city into three zones. You decide that this will get emptied in year one, this in year two, this in year three. This is because the po the population is more or less similar. Uh, the number of households is more or less similar in this. So, and then you go back to year four, year four you go back to year one. So, that is another way. Instead of, if you can't geotag or that is difficult, then this could be the other way. Uh, treatment and reuse. Uh, there are two ways to going about uh, selecting the treatment technology. When you select a treatment technology, and then you look for avenues where you can reuse the products that you produce. The other way is you look for what are the alternative products that are available in the market and what products you want to. So if there is a demand for say compost, then why don't you design a treatment technology or select a treatment technology that will produce compost, right? So instead of designing for disposal or planning for disposal, you plan for reuse. And there are some advantages of this approach. One is 
it optimizes treatment so depending on what the reuse is you can decide on what is the level of treatment needed if you are going to incinerate it finally like if you are using it as an industrial fuel you don't have to reduce pathogens to zero level right but instead if you want to use it for agriculture then you have to ensure that the pathogens reach zero okay similarly it brings in automatic quality control say uh, the reuse product is used as a compost in farms and the farmers find that they are not getting benefit as uh, projected or as desired then they then the demand will automatically drop and that will ensure that you want you improve the quality of your treatment plan or quality of treatment and plus it will generate some revenue for the municipality again a rosy picture it may not actually do so but there is at least an opportunity to generate revenue a uh, possible alternatives suitable for uh, kerala or suitable for alapura alapura include soil enricher fuel pellets and uh, building material building material in a sense that you can mix it with uh, uh, something like when you are baking bricks you mix it with uh, the mud and when you uh, put the bricks in kin uh, all the this organic matter will also uh, get burnt that will effectively reduce the weight of the bricks and reduce uh, load on the structure itself okay and uh, but as we discussed earlier as sarda discussed earlier that to to decide on treatment technology or treatment capacity needed you need to know what are the characteristics of fs that you are emptying and which vary from town to town depending on many many uh, factors and you also need to uh, understand the quantum of fs in on in each type of oss you need uh, studies to characterize and quantify fs and second you for this to follow this uh, design for service approach or design for uh, reuse approach uh, you need to have a study of assessment of what is in demand what end product will be in demand in the town so these are our recommendations uh, finally to financially sustain the service there are two ways of doing it uh, and there are advantages of doing it and of course the municipality can always choose to start with an uh, on demand service where every time a tank is full they can call the municipality and the municipality can charge him then in there and over a period of time move to one schedule emptying second make it a tax based system okay so finally conclusions uh what have we done through this study so what we've done is we've developed a methodology to understand the current status uh moving beyond survey information census information uh second we've uh, demonstrated that uh, census is not a reliable uh i mean census information on sanitation is not very reliable when it comes to uh planning at city and sub city level at all india level it doesn't really matter whether you have 32% septic tank or 40% septic tank it won't really matter because you are making policies depending on that but at ground you are actually planning in in much detail right so at town level or ward level that planning is very uh what is the word sensitive to the type of information you have and therefore at town level it is very important to have as accurate information as possible then this picture demonstrates the service chain of uh, service chain in alapura user interface almost everybody has or everybody has a toilet there is some practice of collection and empty not as desired but there is some service and there is no treatment and disposal okay uh recommended action points include that all we suggest that all on site systems in the town should be septic tanks i mean whatever is built in future should be septic tanks and whatever exist other than septic tanks should be replaced gradually uh development maintain a database of all on site systems uh provide scheduled emptying service uh through licensed service providers <coughs> uh we need further research to assess demand of end products uh quantity and quantity uh, character characteristics of fs are needed 
and levy tax to recover operational expenditure over the ending cycle. Thank you.